Pisces, welcome to your September 2020 general tarot reading. It's Raina here, so I have a clip on mic because somebody was complaining about it being too quiet, and I have to keep my voice down, that's why. So I'm hoping this will be a little bit better. Maybe I can clip it where it's more prominent. Okay, we'll see if that works. I usually don't use anything when I record because it doesn't seem to change the quality of the uh, recording. So let's see what happens here. And um, huh. I'm getting that Six of Swords a lot for some reason. I don't know why. Let me see if I can turn this down a little bit so you can see it. It's My new tripod doesn't have a lot of flexibility with the head, but yeah, you can see it. So, um, the heart of the matter is the Seven of Pentacles, which is the farmer's card about kind of the crop. Um, looking at your, I was going to say, looking to see how the harvest is going to do. We're going to have a harvest moon on October 1st. I was wondering when that was coming because um, I always thought it was in September. But apparently not. And um, this is kind of like waiting for the harvest, seeing what is... Um, going to happen and this is in order to um, gauge your progress with something that you're doing and a lot of these cards seem to suggest something that is um, you know more on the level of, of uh, work related or you know pentacles can be tangible progress but I, you know, I do try to include a personal angle if somebody's going through relationship issues as well, because uh, sometimes it it's not about the um, the work, even if it's pentacles. It can be about the value in something. You know, it's something valuable to keep pursuing a relationship. For instance, um, is it worthwhile? So. Um, Sometimes this card can suggest that somebody has the potential for being too impatient with a situation and may throw in the towel before uh, they've re really given something a chance. And for Pisces, since you're right next to Aries, you may have inner planets in Aries. I always like to mention these because then sometimes people say, oh, I have that, and they think it's really cool. Because Venus in Aries is notorious for going from one relationship to the next. And this is done because I wouldn't say that the person is necessarily fickle as much as impatient and wanting to um, have something transpire right away. Now, sometimes you know, you just know, you know, that this is the right person for you. So you might have to go through multiple relationships until you find that special someone. So I'm not suggesting for one moment that uh, you just um, stay with a person forever because that might not be the right person for you. But um, by the same token, if you're the type of individual who always kind of jumps around because you like that rush of the new relationship that can set you up for just kind of um, never, you know, investing in it. You know, I think of the seven of pentacles as a form of investing energy into something. In the past position, we have the nine of pentacles, which is a card of financial independence. So um, for some people, if you were in a situation professionally where um, you got some kind of a buyout or I don't know what you call it 
um, maybe with all of this work shortage stuff, something occurred on that level and you decided to take them up on it, like an early retirement or just some kind of money to voluntarily quit, um, that may have given you the ability to start your own business. And now you're trying to see if it's actually going to you know, work out, if it's going to pan out. The higher message is a perfect one for this particular scenario. The Magician card, which is about you have everything that you need to do what you want to do. It's not about having, you know, so much money or whatever you think that you need to, to properly do something. It's more about whether or not you believe in yourself and are willing to maybe stick it out and to rely on yourself. Pisces people sometimes are looking for others to help them out. And, you know, in, at an extreme level, this can lead to a dependent type of personality. And this is because Pisces is very influenced by other people. Now, this is a generalization. Some Pisces have a lot of Aries, so they're very independent or, you know, they just are as individuals, you know, maybe a lot of Aquarius and they just have their own way of doing things and they don't want that kind of interference and they don't want somebody um, giving their own two cents because they're, you know, especially with like these two signs that I mentioned, they're very proud. Um, and what I mean by proud is they pride themselves on being uh, self-sufficient or independent. And so this isn't something that they would typically do. Actually, to tell you the truth, the magician card is connected to Aries. So that can tell you everything you need to know about that card. Um, but um, if this is a personal relationship, it might be that if you if you are starting to um, suspect after months maybe of dating somebody that it just doesn't feel like it's gelling, you might be 100% correct. But perhaps um, you jumped right into a new relationship because you're afraid of standing on your own two feet. And maybe that is exactly what you should have been doing. Um, that, to me, always is something that I, I, even though I don't tell people to do, I suggest people seriously consider is, is um, spending time alone in between relationships so that they are not um, just kind of like mindlessly looking for love without, you know, kind of reflecting on what, what has transpired in the past. These are the kinds of things that can lead to, um, what would I call it, just lack of self-awareness and making the same mistakes over and over again. Speaking of which, we have as the challenge card, the Two of Cups. This is a card of reuniting with somebody, maybe being, you know, estranged from a particular person. And in some cases, a person that you deep down inside feel is your soulmate. And maybe that person is the one that got away, is the person that you really want to be with, but you feel that you can't be with. And so you had some kind of a rebound situation. Um, it can also be not being able to get over a situation, unrequited love. Can be the two of cups and um, personally I'm one of those people I mean it sounds sad doesn't it unrequited love if if you love somebody who doesn't who is not in love with you maybe they love you as a fellow human being but not in that way but you're still hung up on them my feeling is that it's impossible to be hung up on somebody who is not in that into you unless there is a payoff, um, that it gives you some kind of an excuse. My 
best bet is that it gives you the excuse of why you have to be, um, you know, single or why you can't accept another person into your life. When in fact, you may get hung up on the, the type of people that are incapable of loving you. Either they, they are narcissists, they are commitment phobic, they are uh, maybe already involved in a relationship. So it was like a, um, an extramarital type of relationship that was kind of a long shot to begin with. So those kinds of feelings can only be resolved within yourself. Holding out for somebody that is clearly involved with somebody else and has no intention of leaving is actually self-torture, but it, it doesn't, it lets you off the hook of having to get intimate with somebody. And this is why the seven of pentacles is so important because anybody can put on a good face for a little while, but eventually people drop their masks and they show who they really are. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if a fair number of Pisces people have gone through trauma in their life. Um, you know, serious trauma, Pisces sun, Pisces moon, even Pisces rising. And that can do strange things to a person that can cause them to think that they really want love when it's the thing they're most afraid of. So I'm hoping that Pisces has, you know, we've had these eclipses in cancer uh, in recent months, in the last couple of years, and this has affected the love sector for Pisces. And I'm hoping that there have been enough Pisces who have gotten over, oh yeah, that's right. Well, this is not an eclipse though, because we're done with those eclipses. So, but it certainly ha may have changed the dynamic in love for you or just your um, idea of love, which is good. I mean, that's the main thing is that you drop this idea that love is automatically supposed to be painful. Yes, there can be painful moments in true love, but they should not be seen as, you know, the norm, like something that is so common that we would just look anticipate it. Um, it's part of the it's part of the whole thing, but it's your relationship should be primarily full of joy and definitely not full of pain. If this is someone that you are involved with who either will not commit or is involved with somebody else, so commitment would require them to completely turn their life upside down and leave a marriage and that kind of a relationship, then you have to decide how long you're going to tolerate this and put up with it because it's it's kind of a dead end. And it's a dead end, dead end on two fronts. First of all, because the person may be stringing you along. And secondly, because that person has shown themselves to be um, un untrustworthy. They're lying, they're sneaking around on their partner, they're cheating. And that is, um, that's not good character. But I want to make it clear that I do understand that there can be, you know, situations that are a little bit understandable why people do these kinds of things. So I'm not just totally in judgmental mode. What is coming in is a chariot card. Now, what I was alluding to, I was mentioning a um, eclipse in Cancer, but I realized it's not an eclipse, it's a full moon, but it's occurring on December 29th in Cancer, and this would be your fifth house of romance. So that might be, a, this might be a timing card in the next few months where you see the situation as it truly is. 
and you are able to make an informed decision as a result. If this all, you know, here I am going off on a relationship ta tangent. If this is about like a, a new business that you have started that you're not sure is um, going to pay off, is do you have a partner? Do you have somebody who has invested in it, who has not been helping? Maybe they promised that they would help and they really didn't. Um, it looks like you might be financially independent either way, so you can just write it off as a loss and move ahead because the chariot card is a good omen for success. But it is a card of travel, and so is this. This could be a card of relocation. This outcome card, the Six of Swords, uh, choosing peace, leaving behind drama, conflict, and moving in a more peaceful direction. So um, there, you might have a conflict if you're waiting for somebody who is just not ready to commit for whatever reason, and um, you might, you know, if, if the chariot is a timing card, it may take you several months until you have this aha moment, but it will get there, and you will see things a little bit more realistically. Um, Pisces always wants to believe people, and that's a, you know, I think that is a uh, wonderful quality to be trusting and give people the benefit of the doubt. But there's also something in it for you when you are um, perhaps in a position where it doesn't look good, you know, a certain situation doesn't look good. You might be wanting to believe other people because it promotes the illusion that you seek to um, perpetuate inside your mind. But eventually, even you may get tired of waiting and you have a lot of love to give somebody. So you're not somebody who works well um, alone sitting there by the, I was going to say sitting by the phone, which anybody under the age of 30 or even 40 might not remember <laughs> when you had to sit by the phone. Uh, because, because even um, answering machines came around in the 80s or even late 70s. <laughs> so people were a lot more independent of their phones. But um, you might see things in a positive, or, you know, in a, in a, truthful light and that allows you to break free from it and you know any kind of conflict that is coming about can be within yourself where you are kind of fighting against the truth of the situation and that can be very exhausting you know it's far better to to see things as they are and then deal with the consequences of that truth Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that this wasn't too soft. I'm going to be checking it out when I upload it. Um, I hope this resonated. Uh, if you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.